us sing this out. You give life. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. And great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise. It's your breath. Good morning, guys. Um, so uh, so excited for you guys to join us again this morning. Um, happy Sunday morning. Um, uh, thank you for hopping on here um, and and just uh, diving into the Word together. Um, we are continuing through our reading plan um, like we have been uh, for the last um, four or five weeks now. We've been doing this um, this quarantine thing, and uh, I hope that you are staying safe um, and that you are being encouraged. I hope that um, as you guys are in isolation, that your um, your walk with the Lord is growing, um, that you are getting to spend some extra time with maybe some family that you um, haven't been able to get get to spend a lot of time with. Um, 
parents, I know you guys are getting to spend more time with some of your students, um, and that that is a uh, a blessing, um, and and I know that that can be challenging as well. So, uh, students, help your parents out, uh, be nice to them. Uh, but I'm just so glad that you guys are here with me uh, this morning, um, another Sunday, the Sunday after um, Easter Sunday when we celebrated that Jesus is alive, that He defeated death. Um, and guess what? That is still true. Um, it's it's not just true last Sunday. It's true today. Um, it'll be true tomorrow. Um, so uh, we are going to uh, continue to uh, walk through a passage in our reading plan. Uh, this was our second week of our reading plan where we've been in 1 Corinthians. Uh, so this morning, if you have your Bible, go ahead and open it up to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Uh, that's a, we're going to be looking at a passage in 1 Corinthians 10 this morning. Um, so go ahead and grab that and, and open up there. I hope that you guys have all been able to um, to join along in our reading plan. If you haven't, no worries at all still. Uh, jump in. Uh, it's a great time to jump in and get um, get uh, start 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 reading that that plan um, as we are walking through scripture together as we're walking through books of the Bible together um, it's a great way to engage in God's word and when you know that other people in the student ministry friends of yours um, uh, are, are also on the same page of scripture it also gives us a chance to talk about scripture with one another so I hope that you guys are engaging with that um, if if you're not do it I encourage you to do it um, you can find the link um, on our on our website or in our Instagram bio, um, or we can also send you a, a paper copy of that. We'd love to do so. So, First uh, Corinthians chapter ten this morning is where we're going to be. Um, this is Paul writing to a church in Corinth. Again, we kind of talked about that a little bit last week. Last week we talked about how uh, the 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 word of God, the truth of God, um, can seem like foolishness to to the people of the world, and and how we um, we are to stake our claim on that truth, that that truth transforms us, that it is uh, wiser than any human thought, um, and that we are to uh, claim that and rest in that. So as Paul is continuing to just uh, teach and, 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 and write this letter to, to the church at Corinth, he's just encouraging them with different things, he's, he's warning them against different things, and that's one of the things that we get to here in 1 Corinthians 10. Um, it kind of starts out, the first few verses are talking about um, the different things that some of the uh, Old Testament people went through. The fact that um, like the guys like Moses and Joshua, they got to experience all of these amazing things in the wilderness, right? And that they still had times of sin, that they still had times where they turned their back on God or, or messed up. And so um, I want you to look at... Verse 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 11. He says, now these things happened to them as an example. These things, what he's talking about is them struggling with sin. They struggled with sin. He, he's, ta- he's talking about how they, they, uh, they desired evil. They, they, um, they, would, they would drink um, too much. They would, uh, they would indulge in sexual immorality. Those are the things that they were dealing with and struggling with and battling with even in the midst of the wilderness. The times when they turned their back on God, those are the things that they were doing. And Paul says, now these things happened to them as an example. And what happened to them? Well, they they wandered around in the wilderness for a long time. Some of them didn't get to go in and see the promised land. Um, that they that they had been promised that their peoples had been had been promised that their their sons and daughters were the ones that uh, were able to go in and not them um, that some of them were just uh, they were they were destroyed they they ended up dying because of uh, as a consequence of their sin so that's why these things um, happened to them and it was written down as an example to us now verse verse twelve therefore. Let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed lest he fall. No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape 
that you may be able to endure it. So verse 12, he says, Therefore, don't let anyone who thinks he stands, no, let everyone who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. Right? What, what Paul's saying there is, if you think you have this thing figured out, don't become prideful in your walk with the Lord. Don't become prideful in thinking that you're doing everything the right way. Because pride, as we know in, in Scripture, in other places, is pride comes before the fall. And that's what uh, Paul is really getting at here. Don't be so proud. Don't think that you won't struggle. Don't think that you won't be tempted. Don't think that things aren't going to come at you, that the enemy is going to come after you. Because he will. Because when you think that you're standing, you better be careful because that's when you might fall. Whenever we stand in our own pride, whenever we stand on our own power and strength, that's what Paul's getting at. He's saying when, when we try and do that ourselves, you better be careful because that's when you might fall. And then he gets into this temptation piece. And some of you guys may have heard this verse before, but I want to kind of come at it at a different, different angle. Verse 13, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. Let me just stop there for a second. If you're, if you're watching this uh, this morning or maybe a, few, a future date, and you think that you're the only person that struggles with whatever sin you're dealing with, with whatever struggle you're dealing with, that is a lie from the enemy. That is not true. There is no temptation that is not common to other people. You are not alone in your struggle. The reality is, is that we all have a sin struggle. We all have something that we're dealing with. That, and sin, by definition, separates us from God. Right? And so, don't, don't think that you're alone in your struggle. Regardless of, of what it is. And whatever it is, don't think that you're the only one. You are not alone and you are not in isolation in your struggle. And we know that right here from Scripture. He continues, he says, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond your ability, but with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. This is something that I heard a lot growing up when I was in your guys's. Uh, shoes when I was your age, you know, God, God's not going to tempt you beyond something you can handle. God's not going to give you more than you can handle. That's often um, a quote uh, that is uh, very untrue, right? That God's not going to give you more than you can handle. That's, that's not accurate. He probably will give you more than you can handle. But here's the reality is that when we are grounded and our hope is in Jesus, there's Anything that we face, anything that we battle, anything out there, he can handle. Okay? So that's number one. The second piece here is that it, it says there, there's no temptation that you will face that will beyond will be beyond your ability, right? Now what does that mean? Well, I think we cannot stop there. We can't put a period there. Because if we put a period there, then it's like I should be able to fight this temptation. I should be able to beat this temptation. And that's not what Paul's saying. He starts off by saying, God is faithful. He's not going to, he is faithful in the midst of our temptation. He's faithful in the midst of our struggle. And how do we know this? Because when we are tempted with the temptation, this is the end of verse 13, with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Guys, I don't know about you, but there's been times where I know that the enemy has been tempting me, clearly tempting me. Moments of struggle in my life where I know the enemy is tempting me. And, and when I really read this verse and understood it for the first time, I remember I was in college, and I remember the next time that I was tempted, looking for the opportunities to get out of that temptation looking for um, the, the, the thing that God was placing there to get me out of that temptation, to rescue me from that. And that's what Paul's saying, is that when you are tempted, be on the lookout because God is making a way for you to endure it. He is giving you a way to battle against that temptation. 
whether it's to flee it, to get out of there, to find a friend that you can run to, whatever it is, He is making a way for you to get out of that temptation. Be on the lookout for it. Know how the enemy gets you. Know the ways the enemy attacks you, the things that you struggle with. Be on the lookout for how He's tempting you to fall into those things. And then, Look for the way that God is providing a way out of that temptation before you step in to that sin. Guys, I love you. I hope that this was an encouraging word this morning. I hope that you will again join us at 1030 as we um, worship as a whole church together online. I love you guys.